working on this new funk record. I know y'all been waiting on it. I will play all night if you want me to. I've been setting y'all up for about 12 years. I will guarantee you will lose your clue. But the time is now to give it to you. I'm going to give it y'all. And I'm going to bring it to you. I'm going to bring it to your eye. I'm going to lay it in your lap. I'm going to let it grow. Because it's so funky, it's going to close your eye. Let's go. The funk record, the funk record, the funk record. God, the funk record. I mean, I'm talking about it's Tiz, the planetarians, the whole alter ego, the whole deal, the funk record. Woo hoo! Wayman has this this idea, you know. Started he started with his alter ego, Tiz. His alter ego was very funky. So on this record, you're gonna hear so many funky tracks. You're gonna hear Wayman being himself, clowning. Nothing like you've heard before, you know, uh, on his jazz records. This record is strictly for the funky at heart. When you play upside down left handed and you could still funk, you know, I see these guys playing funk bass right handed and that top string means a lot to them, you know, that thumb thing is big and funk. Wayman does that stuff upside down and can do it with his fingertips and stuff and pick with his thumb. So he's playing upside down, poor boy, left handed, and I ain't ever seen anybody do that. Funk, in order to be real funk, has to smell like something. It's kind, of, but in a humorous way. Funk to me is funny. And our goal was to keep this thing uncut, you know, keep it dirty, gritty, you know, keep it, keep it just raw. You pour some water on it, it turn into doo doo. You know what I'm saying? It turned in just the stanky stuff. I don't know, but it's just some stanky stuff. And Wayman was, his purpose on this record was to be funky and put a whole lot of stanky stuff on his record. So we got a whole lot of stanky stuff, you know, on this record. This record is full of stanky stuff. Trust me. And when you when you listen to this record, your your speaker's gonna be just pooting. You, you're gonna be rolling. You, what's that smell? It's nothing. It's just that the funk. <laughs> Though Tiz was battling cancer during the making of the funk project, he found the creative process to have an almost spiritual healing process. His wife Regina explains. The funk record came at a very, very pivotal time. Um, while Wayne was doing chemo, uh, this is something that would get him out of the bed when he otherwise uh, was relatively uh, tired, but he was so, so excited about it. He'd come in, he'd record something, he'd get something back from Derek, and, uh, babe, come listen to this, come listen to this. So, of course, I'd go out to the studio, we'd listen to something, we'd give each other a high five, some things I would, and I would laugh because he was doing what I call uh, drag when he was talking <laughs> all, all that crap. Funkmeister DOA explains how two men had one vision and made it happen in two states. Wayman and I, we cut this whole record. It's a, it's a unique record because we cut the record through file sharing, through the internet. I mean, you know, I would send him files, he would send them back. You know, we would send files to George Duke, he send them back. We send files to, you know, some of the horn players. We send files to the, to the suckers and they would sing on it. And, just back and forth. So we cut this whole record through the internet. That's what makes this record unique because when you listen to it, you're going to think, you know, everybody was in the room playing together and jamming together. And that's what I loved about the production. Man, give me the keys to the deuce and the quarter, please. So what do you get when you combine a party-sized bag of corn chips, a three-week-old batch of collard greens, your teenage son's two-day-old gym socks with some peace funk from George Clinton, some dookie sticks from George Duke, and some greasy, fat, low-cow vocals from Ollie Woodson? Huh. Funk, of course. When Wayman were talking about he was talking about who he would like to be on the record, and he said, babe, I'll tell you, ideally, I have this one uh, track that I want George Clinton on. And I remember looking like, dude, where is he? Do we know where he is? He's in the snow. <laughs> George in the snow Reno. Stay with us, y'all. This George, the hunt for George Clinton is on. Yeah, right. on and crack. Come on, it's time to ride. Excuse me, 
sir, we're looking for George Clinton. Have you seen him? He, he, you know, Dr. Funkenstein, he got crazy looking hair. No? All right, bro. Bless you. Bless your heart. What's up, Godfather? What's happening, man? <laughs> we told y'all the Godfather was about to land. I mean, when he sent me the track, he says, Duke, I want you to play on this track, man. You know, I got I got something. He says, it's funky and it's sticky and this and that. So I put all this weird synthesizer stuff. I, I mean, I thought I was was uh, playing with punk Funkadelic with the kind of stuff that I was playing and all these weird synthesizer sounds. And I had a, a great time playing on this track. But I sent him an email uh, with the track and he says, man, he said, this track, he said, the stuff you put on there is just stinky. And I said, well, you know, you can't fake the funk or your nose will grow. Let's the week that went past, Derek uh, was here at my home in the kitchen. And he said, okay, whenever you're ready, just let me know. Uh, he said, and, well, first of all, do you want to finish this? And I said, absolutely. Because Wayne was so excited about it. We decided that we were absolutely going to finish it. I mean, it was like, uh, I was gonna do it no matter what because he was so, so excited about it. And for me, what it does for me is um, it leaves me a piece of him because he talks so much on it, he spoke so much on it, um, that it helps me keep his voice so I don't lose his voice through this swamp record. Last time I saw him was about two weeks. Mm -hmm. About two or three weeks before he passed away. He was in Vegas and he went out to dinner and he was getting pretty weak and I remember ordering like a $4,000 bottle of French wine. And I poured him a little splash of it. And I said, hey, I said, uh, you gotta have a little taste of this. Even if you don't eat that fish, I thought you gotta taste this. He took a little pull and he said, damn, I can feel that all the way down that leg they cut off. <laughs> <laughs> I think for the guys that were the smooth jazz fans, that they should give this record a shot. They should really listen to this and really realize where Wayman's heart is and was. He just stepped a little further back and decided to pick up a little more dirt and sprinkle it on his tracks. And that's all he did. And so they should give this a shot because this, this is the real Wayman Tisdale. In the spring of 2009, Wayman Tisdale left this earth to join other musical greats such as James Brown, Michael Jackson, Curtis Mayfield, Grover Washington Jr., and many others on the other side. But don't despair, Funketeers, as Tiz himself was known to say on many occasions, it's all right, it's okay. It's all right, it's okay. Hold your head up, keep the faith. It's alright, it's okay Don't worry, it'll make a way It's alright, it's okay Hold your head up, keep the faith It's alright, it's okay Don't worry, it'll make a way Been pimping this funky move. 